My name is Lewis Tembleke and I'm the librarian at the Museum of London. So around uh, this time last year, uh, as we were all in the middle of uh, the second lockdown, I decided that it was a good time to um, actually look at the special collections at the library. And the Emma Hamilton's volumes were an obvious place to start. And I did some research. I tried to understand their historical context, where they came from, who had owned them. And then really one story just followed. And um, after some weeks of reading into the history of um, Emma Hamilton, I had an opportunity to come back to the museum and look at the volumes themselves. And then it was just a matter of trying to understand um, who were the authors of the songs or the music pieces, compare those names with names that had been mentioned in Emma Hamilton's biographies. And one thing just um, brought the other, and um, this network of um, important musicians from the time, from both the period that she lived in, um, in Italy, in Naples, where she was um, learning uh, music and singing, and also the period after she came back to the UK, around 1800. Um, it, it, show, it showed this connection between her and important musicians of the time. Finding that some of the pieces were actually uh, dedicated to her and included the names of the authors or the composers and also a couple of the songs actually had notes by Emma Hamilton referring to who the song had been composed. Um, that helped match uh, those names with real people that had been part of her life. All the songs refer in one way or another to one of Nelson's victories. And we know this uh, because of historical context or actually because the lyrics refer to those battles or people that actually took part uh, on them. December the 11th, we have organized um, an event uh, that includes a performance of uh, newly discovered songs, but also some other music that um, belongs to um, Emma Hamilton's songbooks. And they will give us a, almost like an historical context about the music of the time. My name's Alice Proctor. I'm an art historian and writer. I think it's really exciting to hear this music and I'm mostly really excited that everything around it is focusing so heavily on Emma Hamilton because it's thanks to her music books that we still have, the records of these songs, we still have this information and trying to focus it on, on her life and her involvement in commissioning some of these pieces and collecting them is exciting. And to give her some recognition as someone who was interested in arts and culture as well. The event we've organised is a once in a lifetime um, opportunity to actually uh, attend a performance of these songs that um, have not been performed in 220 years. We have been very lucky to be able to partner with the uh, Guildhall uh, School of Music and Drama to um, help us uh, put together this performance and they will bring the uh, history of music perspective to the Emma Hamilton storyline. I think Emma's just a really fascinating person because she sort of pops up in the peripheries of so many people's lives and that means that she's often not given much space or consideration to herself. She's always referred to as, you know, a muse or a girlfriend or a mistress or just never really given actually that much agency of her own. But she has this really incredible life. She starts out very poor, very impoverished family with sort of no connections and no status and she becomes the most famous face in London, in the art world at that time. History traditionally has been quite unfair with Emma Hamilton. She was someone that started with next to nothing and became one of the most famous women um, in the, at the turn of the 18th to 19th century. Um, she's always remembered as being Nelson's mistress, where in fact, actually, that was a very valid love story. What these songs bring, however, is the fact that these famous um, composers of the time, actually, by giving those original songs to Emma, they were um, in one way endorsing the relationship that was really badly judged in the public eye. She's treated as this figure of ridicule and she pops up in a lot of caricatures and things like that at the time as well. Usually they are making fun of her appearance, making fun of the fact that she had been this beautiful young woman and as she ages she gains weight, she loses some of her kind of youthful beauty, obviously, and she stops being the sort of celebrity face that she was when she was, you know, 20. She's in the background of everyone else's stories and she pops up as kind of like an extra in, in all of these major historical events and it's not until we really sit down and think about her life and her biography that we realise just how important she was to most of those events. You know, she's this really influential figure in society in the 1800s.